The Destiny 2 situation is getting worse. It is seriously really bad now. Fellas, we may just be at the end, and we've definitely over-dramatized things in the past, but things are not looking good for Bungie right now. An article on Bloomberg, recently posted by Jason Schreier, Sony's Bungie game unit cuts 8% of staff after Destiny Play wilted. 8%! It goes on to say that sales at the studio were running 45% below projections for years. Sales running 45% below projection is crazy. Considering probably their projections weren't high, because the, the truth is, you can't run a game like Destiny like this, okay? People are gonna give it one chance, two chance, three chance, four chances, but at the end of the day, the same thing is gonna happen to Blizzard. They're gonna release a product, and people are gonna be pretty much instantaneously quitting it. That That's how these things happen. You can't have a bad reputation, and you can't have a... Well, Destiny 2's reputation has been absolutely atrocious in the past couple of years. You can't have that happen for multiple years. And somehow, magically, uh, you know, the sales, the player count, the everything doesn't drop. It does. So, their estimates, most likely, for, uh, for sales were already not really that high. Because they were most likely already anticipating a maybe break even kind of point on where they want to be but be but almost 50 percent below if that happens honestly everyone everyone involved in any decision making there should be get, uh, getting fired right off the bat instantaneously because this is an acceptable level of bad honestly year and layoffs are part of a bigger revamp at Sony PlayStation units. Now Bungie's decision to cut an estimated 100 jobs from its staff of about 1200 followed dire management warnings earlier this month of a sharp drop in popularity of its flagship video game Destiny 2. Just two weeks ago, exactly- 100 from uh, 120, is, isn't that- 7.5% not aid, by the way. Executives at the Sony-owned game developer told employees that revenue was running 45% below projections for the year, according to people who attended the meeting. Chief Executive Officer Pete Parsons... And that's, by the way, keep in mind with the, f uh, with the fact that there's already too many cosmetics in Destiny 2 as it is. That the only thing they added to the game is cosmetics at this point, and they still can't make it. Pin the big miss on weak player retention for Destiny 2, which has faced a poor reception since the release of its latest expansion, Lightfall. The next expansion, more like the light fail. Also, what just happened with the video quality? Why, why, why did you just randomly decide to go slightly down? That was that was not cool. YouTube. The final shape was getting good, not great feedback. And management told those present that they plan to push back the release to June 2024 from February, according to the people who asked not to be identified because they weren't authorized to speak publicly. The additional time would give developers a chance to improve the product. Now keep in mind, guys, this meeting happened two weeks. That means that the product is one, finished, two, they don't know how to improve it. Because how do you finish a bad product if you, you know, you know it's bad? You don't. You fix the bad things and you remove the bad things. Which means pushing it back means nothing. Because they have no idea what's wrong with it to begin with. So that's really bad. Weeks ago. Really so bad. this is after the reveal of the final shape. And a lot of us were wondering, had Bungie planned on pushing back the final shape during the reveal? And my thought process was no. You could definitely tell, like the entire vibe of Bungie was that they were rounding the corner and putting the polish on that expansion. At least that's how I perceived it. Now, in the meantime, Parsons told staff that Bungie would be cutting costs, such as for travel, as well as implementing salary and hiring freezes. The people said everyone would have to work together to weather the storm. He said, leaving employees feeling salary freezes doesn't mean that people who are working that don't get paid. Essentially, this is just uh, increases in salary. They, they kind of worded this strangely. Determined to do whatever was needed to get revenue back up. But on Monday morning, the news got and that most likely involves bonuses. Dozens of staffers woke up to mysterious 15-minute meetings that had been placed on their calendars, which they soon learned nice. were part of a mass layoff. Bungie laid off around 8% of its employees. Trim the fad, by the way. Again, if you have a thousand, uh, if you if you're a gaming development company and you have a thousand employees, 
chances are 500 of them are absolutely useless morons who do, do not deserve to breathe the same air as you. Again, look at Elon, what Elon Musk did to Twitter. Only idiots think you need so many uh, people in a company doing so many random things. No, you just need competent people doing things and you're fine. Bungie doesn't need probably even near close to 1,000 people to make their things operational. According to documentation reviewed by Bloomberg, Bundy didn't respond to requests for comment. Now, employees who were let go will receive at least three months of severance and three months of Bungie paid Cobra health insurance, although other benefits such as experience. Cobra health insurance? That doesn't sound like a health insurance I would want. Since reimbursement ended Monday, sending some staff racing to submit the receipts. Now, laid off staffers will also receive prorated bonuses, although those were on a vesting schedule following Sony's Group's Corp's acquisition of Bungie in January 2022, and mm. will lose any shares that weren't vested as of next month. Now, the layoffs are part of a larger money saving initiative at Sony's PlayStation unit, which has also cut employees at studios such as Naughty Dog, Media Molecule, and San Mattia. Naughty Dog just needs to be deleted off the face of the world honestly you know what naughty dog did they they, they made I, don't, I forgot what's the stupid game's name even watch dogs yeah that absolute atrocious disaster office td cohen analyst doug Kreutz wrote in a report monday that events over the last few days lead us to believe that playstation is undergoing a restructuring my god i would imagine a that's fine Eight percent? Now, PlayStation President Jim Ryan announced last month that he plans to resign. And many of the layoffs at Bungie affected the company's support departments, such as community management and publishing. Remaining Bungie staff were informed that some of these areas will be outsourced moving forward. Now, guys, this article is a big deal because it just gives us some context to what is happening at Bungie internally. We have been speculating. We even pulled Fallout into the stream yesterday and we speculated. But at the time, it was purely speculation. The fact that revenue was running 45 five percent below projections be beyond huge tells you how many pre-orders folks are not buying they were probably expecting oh uh, actually that probably has nothing to do with pre-orders in general that's they, they're not specific uh specifying anything here so this is most likely overall sales so this means microtransactions, pre-orders, you know, new people coming into the game and buying the expansions. That actually most likely means absolutely everything, not just pre-orders. Pre-orders pre -orders are also something that they don't probably even care about that much in the revenue stream. To do much better. But if you remember, even though the reveal was hype and everyone was enjoying the final shape and seeing what's to come, you didn't have that luxury that Lightfall's reveal had. Everybody was hyped because of how good of an expansion the Witch Queen Headshot. was. You didn't have to talk us into buying Lightfall. We just came off of a banger expansion. So of course we were going to break out our wallets and get Lightfall. But since Lightfall launched, the reception was not good for that expansion. There were some good things that did come in Lightfall, but it was far from from that Infinity War experience. Now, I can tell you right now, not only has revenue missed here, but I would say just my analysis of the community, lots of folks aren't really playing Destiny right now. You can even take a look at Google Trends. I don't even play Destiny, but my analysis of the community is that this game is absolutely just over. Again, the most popular Destiny videos are how people are talking about leaving the game and why they are leaving the game. And if it if, if it involves leaving for Warframe, even better, okay? This thing is not in a good position, and it probably hasn't been in a good position for, well, months, years, I guess. Also, <laughs> this is a bit... I hate with... This is not a good way to use Google Trends. The, the, this is this is like the past year where this was probably some kind of release event and th this is not a good this is not a good estimate of how popular destiny is okay um, uh, god people uh, google trends should not exist because it, it just i i can't live in a world where people can't don't don't do this correctly i just can't
happens and see outside of course what's happening now all the traffic revolving around destiny 2 declining at levels we haven't seen for years and you can imagine sony looking at this after they put up 3.6 billion dollars they're probably like yo we made a terrible deal this was a terrible invest hey hey at least they at least they didn't buy bethesda <laughs> This is blowing up in our face. I do find it odd in this article, though, that Pete Parsons was rallying the troops, but then turned around and cut staff by 8%. Talk about putting a damper on morale. The other thing that I'm sitting there scratching my head about is that if you need to get an expansion out by February, why cut staff? And I know the staff positions they did cut don't really cut into the development cycle. So maybe these are truly positions Bungie felt they needed to trim. But missing 45% on revenue, that is certainly sending panic both through Bungie and through Sony. Now, a couple of tweets I want us to go over real quick. And this was actually posted by Paul earlier just to kind of give us a little more context here. Starting with this first tweet, the layoff decisions came directly from Bungie management, not Sony. This is not about Sony replacing Bungie employees with their own. Yeah, Sony's not gonna make this is obviously not sony because sony wouldn't cut eight percent they would cut 30 to 40 to 50 percent instantaneously this this is not even close also the aqua uh, this is a little bit too early for them to start doing it well it's actually around the time when they're starting to look most likely into this but yeah uh, Bungie's management is going to be the ones that, uh, that choose how many I'd let go. Sony most likely actually was the one that said, hey, you need, you need to get rid of X amount of people. Uh, they didn't actually say, okay, they most likely didn't say you need to get uh, rid of X amount of people. They looked at the salaries and said, yeah, this needs to be cut by 15%. And then, you know, Bungie just started cutting. This, this is how these things work. Sony says, "Oh, you're paying uh, you're paying fifteen percent too much in salaries. Reduce it by a hundred k, or hundred well, k is not a lot in this case, but reduce it by you know x amount." And then Bungie's like, "Aye, aye. Well, time to go to the chopping block, and that's how it goes." People. Many employee benefits, though not health insurance, only last until the end of the month if you're let go. Laying people off on the 30th means a single additional day of coverage. Many employees had invested shares as a result. Yeah. Yeah, that's that that's also how they do it. Smart. That that's called business, boy. That, that is literally how business happens result of the sony purchase these shares would be received based on staying with the company for a certain number of years following the sale yep. but those shares revert to bungie if you leave even if you're fired which is what's happening now to many of those affected now again this is per a source that paul pulled from but this whole thing is extremely disturbing now uh, this is this is 100 believable uh if bungie gets acquired by sony they just they they instantaneously don't don't get shares in their you know weapons manufacturing part of sony you know it is what it is this is screaming that Bungie is hurting for cash right now. They're going in mass consolidation mode to the point where they're trying to keep people from receiving their benefits or rolling over into November. And then when we talk about the invested shares, my question... Everyone always tries to get rid of the benefits. If, if there's going to be a mass layoff thing, it, it always is calculated before uh, employees can actually take out any specific benefits, before they are actually eligible for yearly bonuses and all of those things. Completely normal stuff is is are the people that are getting laid off contractually are they within that time frame and are bungie doing this to avoid having to issue shares and then of course how many people were actually technically laid off how many were fired again that last sentence those shares revert to bungie if you leave even if you're fired so everything in between it sounds like whether you're laid off fired or quit those shares go back to bungie if it so happens before the end of your contract period if this Hell is sounding yeah. messed up to you it's because it is now paul continues not, many bungie employees that were Fired, found out in the morning when they were locked out of services, logins, emails, access revoked, and other smart, smart, smart. Big, uh, big. This is this is this is by the way smart. Okay, because you don't want a random employee just saying, "Up, oh, well, I'm fired." Better fucking start random, uh, uh, writing stupid emails and doing shit like that. Yeah, you don't want. Yeah, when you're firing someone like this. I have seen situations <laughs> where people are locked out of their PC one day before they even know they're fired. 
<laughs> That's the best one. That's usually the best one. That they're locked outside of their PCs. What? And they ask, why am I locked outside of my PC? Why can't, why, why doesn't my badge work? <laughs> and the answer is like, was be a bug? <laughs> it's great. It's great. Others who instead found out in meetings were told not to tell team members themselves, as teams would be told by other means. Many employees were unable to say goodbye or exchange contacts. Many oh team no! Team managers were not told at all about who on their team was being laid off, and only found out as it happened. This one's even more disturbing to me because how do you know who you're letting go if the team managers themselves don't even know? As in, how does the higher ups at Bungie know who to choose? Oh, the team managers are also so gonna be let go at some point i can guarantee you that if you were to go through on a merit-based system and say all right i need to because the team manager should be choosing who gets let go right makes perfect sense doesn't it but they aren't so that means that those managers are actually uh, on a uh, they're pretty close to the chopping block already to eliminate the weakest link of every team this seems like because there's no such thing as your boss not asking you the manager of a team who who needs to be let go who whose performance is not up to par well admittedly they have all these internal reports measurements of all the employees and so on maybe they make decisions like that but usually usually it, so they, they're gonna be asked you know someone at least is gonna be asked hey is this person good blah 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 so yeah the fact that the managers weren't actually as this that's kind of a red flag to them that they're, they're gonna probably be on the chopping block or potentially at least make it to the chopping block Hmm, is a chopped or not chopped portion of this section. Someone from accounting made this decision. As if a CFO went there and said, okay, listen, we're not just going to get rid of people based on merit. Instead, we're just going to go through and see where we could save the most money. All right, this person has this many benefits. They'll be able to claim this many shares. Let's terminate them. Guys, tell me if I'm getting this wrong. Please, I hope I am getting this wrong because that is terrible. More so than that was the way in which it was conducted. From Zavala here. She uh, actually, that's a good point. Uh, there are definitely some situations with, with stuff like this this happens and they are looking at some people who are way too expensive for the amount of work that they are perceivably doing so that yeah there is a chance that you uh, that it's rare it's technically kind of rare but there is a chance that someone who is just too expensive is being cut because they just well they're, they're just not that they're just not worth the money that is also a chance maybe they're actually a decent employee or maybe even a good employee but they simply are not worth uh, worth the money because of, you know, I don't know, long standing in the company or something like that. There is a chance. But that should kind of technically be on the rare-ish side. He posted this message up from a former Bungie employee. They said that this morning, my off day, I woke up to a text telling me to make my way to the office for an important meeting. When I got there, the news had already been broken. It was a nightmare. Nice. People were crying at their desk, packing nice. stuff up, and I checked nice. my email and got the unfortunate news. I wasn't even told in person. By the time I left nice. my badge, everything had already been- That's because you're trash, dude. That's because you're trash. Deactivated. I don't even know what I'm nice. going to do at all. Now, if you're like Cross, this is only affecting junior level people. This is only affected people that have been at Bungie for a short duration. Guys, the Halo and Destiny 2 composer, Michael Salvatore, was also let go. Michael Secret. Who cares? The Halo did. Bruh. Bruh, he's probably just too expensive, little shit. Most composers are really good who do this stuff, okay? Because composers are some of the people who don't actually get to become composers because they're trash. Ironically, music, and especially professional level music, is, is one of those rare professions nowadays where you don't just get to become a big shot if you're trash. Yeah. So, who cares? He can be replaced with like 50 billion people who will be happily, happy to do it for less money, probably. Not even a big deal. 
Woods, who wrote Deep Stone Lullaby, was also let go. These are not just people that are junior level. Veterans are being let go here. People that have been with the company for years. Yeah, they're artists, arguably verse. Michael Salvatore actually reached out to Paul, saying, Hi, Paul. Thanks for reaching out to me and for your kind words. The last 24 hours have been crazy, and I'm still sorting through my feelings. Many of my good friends were also let go, and I feel awful for them. My heart goes out to everyone who lost their job yesterday. Regarding myself, the overwhelming feeling I have is one of gratitude. Beginning in 1997, Bungie provided me the opportunity to contribute music to some of the most amazing games ever made. I've been truly blessed to work with so many awesome, creative people over the years. I've learned so much from them, not only as a composer, but as a human being during my time there. One of the things I've always loved about being a part of the team was our willingness to take risk, which has always been a part of Bungie's DNA. And when we would fail, we wouldn't retreat, we'd reload. That wow. is at the heart of what kept me engaged year after year through success and failure. I truly wish for the best. How about you don't fail in the first place? H how about that? Ever tried not being a fucking failure that needs to fix their mistakes because you're incompetent? What a crazy idea. As for my friends who are still there, and I have no doubt that they will be able to right the ship. To the fans, please don't hate on them. Give them a chance to blow you away like they've done so many times before. Peace to all, Mike. Dude, what an absolute gentleman. I want to point out, though, the point he made right there. And when we would fail, we wouldn't retreat, we'd reload. Guys, I have seen some bad expansions come and go. Destiny 1 vanilla had a rough launch, but it eventually got it right. Destiny 2 vanilla was a very rough launch, and it took for second to get it right. <laughs> But we've had some weak expansions here and there and some definite failures. And it's those moments that Bungie would reload, where they would have each other's back. When Activision came out and said that Forsaken underperformed, Bungie rallied together and we as a community rallied behind them, thus resulting in them going solo. This right here is setting a new tone within Bungie's DNA. Call me naive, maybe this has been the tone for quite some time. Maybe that corporate tone has been here for years and it's just taken me until now to see it. But I've seen Destiny almost died. And it's those moments that Bungie has <laughs> nice. brought us some of the best expansions ever. I'm okay with them pushing back the final shape to June, if that's what it takes to right the ship, if you will. I don't think any of us have a problem with waiting for the game to be the best it could possibly be, but just seeing how things are being managed. This is the most disturbing part of all of this. Having folks like DMG come out, who had previously left Bungie, and state the continued echoes of poor decisions made this feel avoidable. I I don't know what's going on with the chain of command at Bungie, but it's clear that there is a problem. And if I was a betting man, I would actually say it starts at the top. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, yeah, the top's probably not that great, but you know, the average dev at Bungie, I feel, is probably most likely a complete incompetent monkey. Anyway, that was Octicip Kvass. Nailed it. Anyway. This was also a quizzer since then. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and have a nice day. Bye bye.